Hello and welcome to this video on the surface area of a cone and a sphere. Now here's a cone, it's got height h and it's got a radius r. Now the curved surface area, and by the curved surface area I don't mean the flat bit at the bottom, I mean this curved surface coming up, that equal to pi times r, the radius, times l. Now what l is, is the height, and that's in contrast to this length here, which is known as the perpendicular height because it's the height which is at right angles to the base. It's perpendicular to the base. That's the perpendicular height, but that's the slant height because it's a height at a slant. So we've got pi r l, and then the area of the bottom of the cone, well, that's just a plain old circle. So that area would just be pi r squared. So the total area of the cone is pi r l, plus the pi r squared, so the curved bit here, plus the flat bit at the bottom. And the surface area of a sphere is equal to 4 pi r squared, and that is given to you in the GCSE formula booklet if you're doing GCSE. Now let's use these formula to solve some problems. We've got this cone here, so we've got a slant height of 13, so L is 13, and we've got a radius of 5, so the R is equal to 5. And first we want to find the curved surface area. So part A, the curved surface area is going to be pi R L, which is pi times 5, times by the L, which is 13, and that is equal to 65 pi. And you could put that in your calculator to find it's a decimal, so 65 pi, press the SD key, and that gives me 204.2 centimetres squared. It's an area, so it's centimetres squared. And then it wants the total surface area, so all we need to do is just add on the bottom of the circle. So it's going to be 65 pi plus pi times 5 squared pi r squared, because that's the area of the circle at the bottom. So that's 65 pi, plus, well, 5 squared is 25, so it's 25 pi. And in total, that is 90 pi centimetres squared. And again, we could put that in our calculator, 90 pi, press the SD key, that gives us 282.7 centimetres squared. What about this second example here? We just want the total surface area. Now we're given the slant height, and this time we're not given the radius, we are given the perpendicular height. Now the problem is we want to use this pi r l formula to get the curved surface area of the cone, but we don't know r, we don't know this radius, so how could we find that radius here? Well, can you notice that this triangle here is a right-angled triangle? So there's this nice relationship between the radius of the cone, the perpendicular height of the cone, and the slant height of the cone. They're all related by Pythagoras' theorem. So if we just call this r, then we can use Pythagoras' theorem. So we've got one of the smaller side squared, so r squared, plus another shorter side squared, and that is equal to the hypotenuse squared. Do you remember Pythagoras' theorem? a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where the c is the longest length of the hypotenuse, in this case, the 25. So then, so if we just evaluate each of these things, so 24 squared is 576. 25 squared, I know off by heart, is 625. Now, r is being squared, then we're adding 576, so let's subtract 576 from both sides. So 65 minus 576 is 49. And then to get rid of that squared, we square root both sides, so the radius is equal to 7. And now we've got everything we need to work out the total surface area. So the surface area, I'm just going to use SA for short, is the curved surface area, so pi r l plus the bottom circle, so pi r squared. So that's going to be pi times the radius, which you worked out 7, times l, which is a slant height of 25, so that's the l, that's the r, that's your h, and then plus pi times the radius squared, so pi times 7 squared. Now if we just simplify that, 7 times 25 is 175, so it's 175 pi, plus that's 49 pi, because pi times 49 is 49 pi, 
and then if we add those together, we get 224 lots of pi. And again, we could always convert that to a decimal by just pressing the SD key. Now I've got a third similar one. This time the radius is given and the perpendicular height is given, but not the slant height. So again, we could just use Pythagoras. So if we call this L, because that's what the slant height is called, and if we use Pythagoras again, we got, let's make that the A, the B, and then that's going to be the C. So we got one of the shorter sides squared plus the other shorter side squared, and that is equal to the hypotenuse squared. Now, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 9 plus 16 is 25, and if L squared is 25, we just square root both sides, so that means L is equal to 5 centimetres. Now we know L is 5, we can again find the total surface area. So the surface area is pi R L, so pi times R times L, plus pi R squared, the bottom circle. So pi times R squared, 3 squared. Now if we simplify that, 3 times 5 is 15, so it's 15 lots of pi. And then 3 squared is 9, so it's 9 lots of pi. And if we have 15 lots of pi and we add 9 lots of pi, we have 24 lots of pi. Now for this fourth one, we're told what the surface area is. The total surface area is 40 pi, and we want to find the exact volume. So we do the usual thing. We do pi r l plus the pi r squared, and we know that is equal to 40 pi. So let's fill in what we know. R is just R, but we know the L, that's 6. So we know it's pi times R times 6, so 6 pi R plus pi R squared. And again, we don't know what R is, and that's equal to 40 pi. And we need to solve this. Now, I notice that everything has a factor of pi, so we could divide both sides by pi. And that gives us 6R plus R squared is equal to 40. Now this is a quadratic equation because we've got an r squared term and we've got some other terms as well. And the way we solve a quadratic equation is to get zero on one side. So we have r squared, we've got plus the 6r, and then we subtract 40 to bring it over to the other side. And we've now got it in the form r squared plus something r plus something or minus something equals zero. So do you remember we need two numbers that add to give the middle number of 6 and times to give this last number of minus 40. What are those two numbers? Well, 10 and minus 4 times give minus 40, but add to give 6. So it's r plus 10 and r minus 4 equals 0. So that means either r is minus 10. If you think about it, if the product of two numbers equal to 0, one of them has to be 0. So either r plus 10 is 0, in which case r is minus 10, or r minus 4 is 0, in which case r is 4. Now, the radius can't be a negative length, so let's put a stripe through that to reject it. So we now know that the radius is equal to 4. So the radius is 4, and we just want to find the volume. Now, do you remember that the volume of a cone is a third pi r squared h? So we just plug that all in. Now, we don't know what the h is, do we? So again, we're going to have to use some Pythagoras here. So that's 6. We know this r here is 4, and we need to find the height. So let's call that h. So if we use Pythagoras theorem, we've got 4 squared plus h squared is equal to 6 squared. And if I just quickly solve that, we get the square root of 6 squared minus 4 squared, and we get 2 root 5. So if I then plug it into here, we have a third times pi times the radius squared, so 4 squared, times by the height, which we worked out to be 2 root 5. And then we put that all in our calculator and just get the answer of the decimal. We're going to get 74.9. And it's a volume and the unit centimetres, so it's going to be centimetres cubed. Now, that was a hard one, wasn't it? Now, we've also got to deal with some sphere-type questions, or half a sphere, known as a hemisphere. So we've got a sphere of radius 4 and we want to find the surface area. Now, do you remember from before, the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. So we just need to do 4 times pi times the radius of 4 squared, 
And if we put that into our calculator, we get 64 pi, or if you wanted that as a decimal, press the SD key, and we get 201.1 centimeters squared. Now the second one, we've got a hemisphere this time, half a sphere. And um, we know that the diameter of the sphere, so the full length across from one side to the other, is 10 centimetres. We want the total surface area. Now, if you think about it, this curved surface area here would be half of the full surface area of a sphere. So we do 4 times pi times the radius squared again. So half of 10, because that's the diameter, is 5. The radius is 5. But, because we only want half of it, we can divide by 2. Equivalently, instead of using 4 pi r squared, you'd use half of that for a hemisphere, so that would be 2 pi r squared. And if we simplify that, we get 50 pi. Now, we've also got to worry about the surface area of the top of the hemisphere. Can you see that's a circle? So we just need to do pi times the radius squared, because that's the area of the circle, pi r squared. So pi times 5 squared, and that is equal to 25 pi. So that means the total surface area is going to be the 50 pi plus the 25 pi, which is 75 lots of pi. And that's going to be in centimetres squared. And again, we could always convert that to a decimal if we wanted to. Now, finally, we've got this question here, similar to when with a cone, we were told what the surface area is. Again, we're told the total surface area of this hemisphere. We're not given the radius, so let's just call this r. When you don't know one of the values, just introduce a variable for it. So we're going to introduce r for radius. So the surface area is 48 pi. What is the volume? Now, what will we usually do to find the surface area of a hemisphere? Well, the surface area is going to be half of 4 pi r squared, so that's going to be 2 pi r squared. And remember that we also had this circle here, which is pi r squared. And we're told that is equal to 48 pi. Now, if we simplify that, 2 lots of pi r squared plus pi lots of pi r squared is 3 lots of pi r squared. So we've got 3 pi r squared is 48 pi. And then you always simplify by thinking what you can divide by. Well, there's a pi on both sides, so we can divide by pi to give you 3r squared is equal to 48. Now, r is being squared, and then you're timesing it by 3. So divide both sides by 3. So that becomes r squared. 48 divided by 3 is 16. And then, well, if r squared is 16, that means r is equal to 4. So we've now found that the radius of this hemisphere is 4, and we want to find the volume. Now, the volume of a sphere, remember was 4 thirds pi r cubed. You are given that in the formula booklet if you're doing GCSE or IGCSE. So that means the volume of a half sphere will just be half of that. Well, half of 4 thirds pi r cubed would be 2 thirds pi r cubed. So the volume we want is 2 thirds pi r cubed, where the r here is 4, so 4 cubed. And we put that into a calculator we get 128 over 3 pi, or if we press the SD key, we get it's a decimal, so it's a 134. And we don't have a unit, so we could always write units cubed if we wanted to.